My name is Grace Jeffers. I'm a design historian, and my specialty is materials. I grew up in the laminate industry, actually, going to trade shows and meeting with customers, going to factories. My father had been a laminate salesman for 37 years. However, I didn't think I was going to grow up and work in laminate or grow up with an appreciation for it until I went to graduate school and I was so inspired that I wrote my master's thesis on the history of the material from 1947 to 1964. After finishing my master's thesis, some folks from the Smithsonian contacted me and I was pulling information reflective of the laminate industry for them. And it was through that that I got to meet some of the folks from Wilson Art who invited me down to Texas to talk about pulling an archive on Wilson Art. And we were talking about it one day, and it was lunchtime, and one of the secretaries suggested, well, you should take her over to the founder's house. There's a lot of old laminate in that house. It's a real hoot. Well, hearing that, I had to go. I'll never forget the moment I walked into the house. I was so shocked. The cabinetry and the architectural details I was seeing right in front of me predated all of my research by at least five years. And so I turned to the company and I asked them to please work with me and help me keep this house from being sold, help me keep this house from being gutted, help me keep the house as it is while I research and see what is the story behind this house. And they did. So from the time we started talking about saving the house to the time it opened to the public was a two-year span. In doing my research, what I discovered was that a lot of the details in the house were first pioneered here in this house. So things that we consider every day, you'll say to me, well, we're all familiar with post-form countertops and laminate wall paneling. Sure, we are today. but. There was a moment in time when somebody first had the idea to make these things. And this house is where a lot of those details were first pioneered. To understand how radical this kitchen is, you have to think of what a typical 1950s kitchen looked like. In those kitchens, they had enameled steel cabinets and laminate was only used for the very surface of the countertop. With the aluminum apron around the edge, that's not how it's used here. You can see that this is an interior where the use of laminate has exploded to every surface, not just horizontal, but vertical as well. One of the things that I always like to point out to people is the fine craftsman techniques that were employed in making the cabinets and the countertop throughout the house. There are little details like the all laminate faced drawer fronts, that there's laminate on the face and the back and then all around the sides. Even the drawers are lined with laminate. I was particularly amazed by the post-formed edge of the countertops. Post-forming didn't occur until the 1970s, and here were examples from the late 1950s. How could that be? But the countertops in the Wilson house look a little different than the post-formed countertops we know today. Instead of having the clean round edge, they were pieced together, much the way a fine furniture maker would make fine furniture. One of the things that surprises people the most when they're here is they say, wow, this house doesn't feel plasticky. It feels happy. And it's true. It's like there's this perpetual joyfulness that exists here. And part of it is by the real durability of the surfaces and the brightness of the colors that have maintained themselves perfectly over all these 50 plus years. It's important to know that this house was not just a show house for the company. Mr. Ralph actually lived here with his family. And he used it as a model home, as an entertainment center for his company, and as a laboratory to see how his material was performing. This house is a milestone in Wilson art history. But more than that, it's a milestone in the history of laminate. When the house was nominated to the National Register of Historic Places, it is, to this day, the only structure on that list listed because of its use of material. It brings the material into a focus that no other structure does. I can honestly say that in my history, this is one of the greatest things I've ever done and I've ever been allowed to work on in my life. 
and I'm really grateful to Wilson Art for giving me the opportunity to have worked on this project.